Good morning. This is Mr. Curran here to tell you a couple quick techniques about using watercolor in preparation for our trip to Walden Pond on Friday. What you see in front of you are the basic tools that we're going to have on Friday at the park. We have our paintbrush, our paint canister, our water bottle full of water, a pencil, and some paper. So we're going to use all these to create our picture at the park. So I'm going to show you a quick, quick way to use your watercolor to get the effects that you're hopefully trying to aim for. So for today we're going to start with just a plain piece of paper that we're going to fold in four parts. So please follow along with the piece of paper at your desk. So we fold once in half and fold in half again. And then I unfold and I should have four fairly even rectangles on my paper. I'm going to quickly label them one through four. So I can discuss my four techniques without having to point. So up in box number one, we're going to start with a very basic technique called a wash. And this is where you're going to use wet paper and a lot of wet paint. Now I say wet because you're going to put as much water on your brush as you can and not a ton of paint. So we're going to show you how to do that. So we're going to start with, if you have a dish, you can pour some water into a dish. If you want to just use your water bottle, that's fine too. So we're going to start very simply with the, by painting the background quadrant with just plain water. I'm just going to get the water all over that rectangle up here. So we're going to start with a wet background and then we're going to put wet, wet paint on top of the water. And what you'll see is that you don't have a lot of details. It's really great for skies or grounds when you want to put a lot of color in a big area without a lot of time. So I'm going to play with some red. So I'm going to get a lot of water into my red paint. And I'm going to take that red and bring that onto box number one. Now you notice that the water that's on the paper is starting to take that paint that I put down and spread it all over the place. So like I said, this is great for if you wanted to put a, a sky or some ground or some grass, but you don't want a lot of detail. Maybe you just want the color down. So that's great. That's my first, first box. I'm going to move over to box number two. Now here, we're going to use a wet background, but what I would call a dry brush. So we're not going to use as much paint, or as, excuse me, as much water on our paintbrush. We're going to put as much paint on the paintbrush as we can. So again, I'm just going to start very simply, cover my whole box of water. So we have a wet background, and we're going to put, use a dry brush technique to put the paint on. And I say dry, which is a little bit of a lie, because you still have to have some water on your brush because it's watercolor. But if you grab a tissue or a napkin, what you can do is soak up some of that excess water. And what this will do is it'll leave as much paint on your brush as you can. So remember, this is a wet background. I'm going to use what's called a wet, or a, excuse me, a dry brush technique. So if you can see that, there's a ton of paint on that. And now what I can do is I can put that on here, and the wet will still take it, but I'm putting so much ink down, you get a little bit more control, and you're putting a lot more pigment on your paper. So 
we're going to move to box number three. Now we're going to do the reverse. We're going to do a wet brush, but we're going to have a dry paper. So this is probably the most common technique that people use. If you grab a piece of watercolor set before in your, in your life, you've probably used this technique. Where you just take water, put it on the brush, put the brush in the paint, and start painting. Okay. So if you compare the box three and box two, and even box one, you're starting to see a lot more detail with the, when the dry paper is in play. Now we're going to move to box four. We're going to have a dry background and a dry brush. So this is great for really fine details when you want to put a lot of paint on the paper. So again, I'm going to use my napkin or my tissue, whatever I have, to soap up some of that water. And I'm just going to get as much paint as humanly possible on my paintbrush. And you'll see when I put that on here, I can get extremely fine details with really nice quality of paint. So those are our four techniques. We have a wet on wet or a wash. We have dry on a wet background. We have wet on a dry background, and dry on a dry background. Now if you are curious how these work, I stole one of my daughter's coloring pages to demonstrate. So you'll see we have a very nice pony picture. So I might say in the background of this, I might want to have a very nice background. So I might use a wash. So I'm going to put a lot of water onto my paper. Because I don't need a lot of detail behind that, that pony. I just want a nice, beautiful sky behind that pony. So I'm going to put some water where I want the color to go. I think this would have a blue sky. I'm going to put some blue on that place back there. So this would be my wash technique. So again, wet background and really wet paint. Now, if I wanted to do the wet background with a dry brush, I'm thinking maybe for this flower, that might be a great place to start. Because this is a, not a really focal point of my picture but I still want to have a little bit more detail than that blue sky. So I'm going to make this an orange flower. So I have a wet flower. I just put some wet water on my flower. And I go in, I'm going to get as much orange on my brush as I can. So I'm using a dry brush on a wet background. Okay, so I've loaded up with orange. I'm going to put that on here. Let's see what that water can do to this. Now because I have the wet background, what I can also do is I can mix my colors with this. So let's say I want to have a fiery orange. I can grab some more red and I can put that in here. And what you'll find is that the water on the paper will start to soak and pull those colors together as you put them down. So as they, you can even see it's starting to pull some of that red this way. And then I finish off with a little bit of yellow in the center of that flower. So that's a wet background with a dry brush. Now, my other two techniques were the basic simple one, which is just wet, or wet paint, a wet brush on a dry background. So for, let's say, the wings. Let's paint the wings with this technique. I'm going to give this, this pony some green wings. Okay, let's put that in there. So you'll notice that the, the paint will start to spread a little bit. I don't have a total control over the, where those paints are going, but that's my third technique. And maybe for the mane, I think I might try to get some really nice details in this mane. So I'm going to use my dry brush technique where I can wipe off some of that extra water 
And let's make that a purple main. I'm going to get as much paint on my brush as I can. And try to fill in this main with as much detail as I can. So you'll see that the purple is really rich compared to some of the green that I used over here. And that's just because I put as much paint on my brush as I can. You'll also notice how far this paint can last me. I've only loaded up my brush once and I made it all the way around the main. But you'll see too, it's not starting to spread like it did up here. And it's definitely not starting to blend up here as it did up in the flower. And it's not soaking the page like it did back here. So if you combine all four of those techniques together, you have a pretty good start at making a watercolor painting that will look the way that you want it to look. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope you can practice this and take some of these new skills to the park on Friday. And until then, happy painting.